Welcome back to Two Rail Fans. We're going to be taking a look at some of our locomotives today that we're wanting to upgrade from DC to DCC. If you're like us, you might either be new to DCC and have a bunch of older locomotives that you want to upgrade, or maybe you have newer DC locomotives you want to upgrade. So for today, we're going to be focusing on the older stuff because almost all of the newer locomotives are DCC ready. Uh, such as that Pennsylvania Railroad steam locomotive we have, which should be plug-and-play except for adding a speaker to it. And we have four different ones behind us. Of course, we have five because we have this Atherin back here. And we have, we've done quite a bit of video on how to upgrade that from DC to DCC. And I did upgrade the motor in, in there as well. So I would say a couple things to consider when you're trying to figure out, they like, save a whole bunch of locomotives you're looking to upgrade. Is there one you really want to run first? Uh, if there is, obviously try and work on that. But there are some other factors to consider. And then you have to have some kind of a plan for how you're going to do this. Because a lot of times there's not going to be a lot of space in here. So you have to have some kind of plan for where you're going to situate things to try and make it work. Uh, we kind of pre-disassembled uh, these locomotives today because you don't need to watch us fumbling around trying to get the covers off. Um, one of the other things to consider is weight. So here we have a Walther's BNSF. Um, I'm not sure what the make of this Union Pacific is. Uh, this is a Bachman Santa Fe back here. And this is an old AHM Santa Fe that I've had for probably about 35 plus years. Uh, so considering all of these, I'll, I'll talk about these different factors as we go through each of these four and kind of see how, what our game plan will be and how you can attack it. So the BNSF, first of all, a couple factors here, and I think why we're really interested in getting this one upgraded. Uh, it's fairly heavy, so it should be a good puller. I forgot to uh, loosen the headlight in here. But if you look in here, so there is a flywheel on here. Um, if you look in here, there's not a ton of room. There is a weight, and I'm assuming this weight goes up to the top. There's no circuit board in here. So if, in terms of this one, positives we have going for it is it's quiet, it's fairly new. It is a good puller. Um, downside, not a lot of room in here, but there is room in here. One of the things you need to consider when you're upgrading to DCC is where you're going to put the weight. So you can see this weight here is probably designed to go up to the very top of the shell here. If we remove that and try to place weight somewhere else and put the decoder there, we should be able to fit that in. So it looks like there is some room here with some modifications. So in a case like this, I would probably try and place the speaker up here somewhere towards the front. Obviously you don't want it sitting on the drive shaft, but, and this is gonna be the solution for a lot of the ather and stuff. Uh, David, you wanna hold these? I'll give you one of these to hold up. And this is from A-Line. These are just steel weights with adhesive. So that's an easy way to fit weight in the locomotive or even rolling stock where you don't have a lot of room. So I think for running reasons and the fact that we don't have a BNSF currently uh, running DCC, we do want to do this one. I will probably do a video on this because it obviously you can see with that weight we're going to need to put the weight somewhere else and come up with some kind of a support for the decoder. Uh, fortunately, uh, the motor looks like it's in great shape. So moving on, I'm actually going to jump all the way over to the end here. This is an old AHM and a lot of people say, why are you even going to bother with the AHM? Well, because I had this as a kid, that's why. <laughs> so this is, uh, 
This is the same breed. I see him missing some ladders here. This has some dog injuries, and I might try and uh, fix that in the future. Uh, this is the same locomotive that my sister just gave us, just the Santa Fe version. So we'll probably do hers first. I actually just changed out the motor from that donor engine last year. You can see that right here. Uh, I think I also had to change a drive shaft in here. The one thing I will say, one of the downsides to this, a couple downsides, these are very loud, so if you're going to do sound, uh, you're probably going to want to run it low speed. Or if you don't care about the sound, I wouldn't even bother putting the speaker in there. I haven't decided if we're doing that yet. Also, for whatever reason, all of these AHM locomotives in the weight compartment came with a partial weight, which is slightly larger than half the size of this. So they're very light. When you pick it up, you can hardly tell there's even a weight in there. So there's a long span here between the drive shafts. There's no flywheels on here. Um, so th those are negatives. Uh, there is room in here above the motor. There should be room in there to put a decoder in. Uh, however, it's going to be a tight fit to get all these w the wires run here. So I'd say the biggest downsides to this, the noise, lack of weight, so we'll have to figure out how to do that. But overall, doesn't look that difficult to try and squeeze things in. Uh, next one, we're going to take a look at this Union Pacific. Uh, this is a more modern one. It kind of, I'm guessing it might be an Athern. It does not say, though, because it has that little bar on the top here. Oops. So, the thing with, yep, this has to be an Athern. Looks just like the other ones, David. This is a newer one. Nice. Um, so anyway, this it looks like it's in good shape. Um, and a piece of metal sticking to the magnet in there to figure out where that goes. So I haven't cleaned this motor up yet, but uh, looks fairly new. So obviously it's not the Genesis technology. The hardest thing with these in doing a DCC conversion is isolating the motor underneath because the frame on here is one of the pickups. So, decent weight to it. A lot of the older Atherns have the weight that goes over the top here. Uh, yeah, we need to sh show them the rails on there. We need to restore those, but they're all still there. Be very careful with that. So, this should be a good runner. Um, fairly heavy. Like I said, the motor, I can tell, needs to be clean. You can see a little bit of uh, dirt in there on the commutator. A little? But the thing is, when you, re when you change these to DCC, as you've seen in the other video, and I'll leave a link to our Atherin uh, Blue Box videos in the description, uh, you can remove this from the top. And I'm hoping uh, we had another YouTuber offer to send us some mounts for the tops of these, which would really help out. So put a mount here. Um, one thing I think I am going to do that I did not do right away is I'm going to leave... Uh, this front mount in here and mount the LED there so it's not connected to the shell. But I think this will be a fairly easy upgrade. And then the last one we have, and I was kind of surprised to see where this one ranked in terms of weight. This is from the Bachmann starter set. And it came with a dummy engine and this unit right here. First of all, if you're wondering how to take this apart, and I took the couplers off because I didn't want to ruin them. This piece, which covers the weight on the bottom, just snaps on and off. And there are two screws on the bottom of that that you need to remove. This looks like it's probably going to be the easiest of all of them. Uh, it already does have a place to mount the headlight on the top. Uh, it's uh, fairly new, fairly quiet. And I think what we can do, since there's already a board on the top here, is simply remove this board and put a decoder on there and rewire everything. So I don't think that there's going to be room for a speaker on this one. However, 
Since we have a dummy unit, we should be able to find a place for a speaker in that unit. We can get a small decoder in there. So we'll see if we can do that, and that way we can have sound. Because whenever we run this, we'll probably be running the pair, the other paired engine with it. Uh, but I think also, uh, you know, just being able to have this this uh, separation here at the weight and have just enough room for the decoder, I think this is probably going to be our easiest. So out of all of these, you may or may not be wondering, or you may not care which one we're going to do first. I think we're going to try and do the, probably, the BNSF first, and then I think we're going to do the AHM Burlington Northern that my sister gave David. But I think eventually all of these you can possibly upgrade to DCC. Um, one of the things I learned in doing the Atherin, there is not enough room to put this on top of a motor. This this was from the Atherin Genesis upgrade kit and have a decoder in there. I could not get that to fit. So all you really need is the, the wire motors. I would not worry about having circuitry like that. But again, these weights, just getting these to be able to add weight wherever you can, I think that's a plus. So in terms of speakers as well, uh, you can get smaller profile, but this is about as small a profile as you can get. So let me just take the top off. Oh, that one's the one that's connected. So there's a little sugar cube style speaker box. You can see there's not really room inside here for that. But in some of these other locomotives, there is. So for example, if we were trying to get that in here. If we had a mount on the top here, there's probably room to do that. So actually the first DCC upgrade we're going to be doing is finishing getting those Thomas lights installed, the LEDs, and getting that uh, Pennsylvania Railroad upgraded. Okay. So anyway, I think that's all we got for you today. I think David's tired of hearing me talk about these things, and he just wants to run some trains tonight. <laughs>